everybody. Today's practice problem comes from Economics, 4th edition, by R. Glenn Hubbard and Anthony Patrick O'Brien. Today we're going to be doing chapter 4, problem number 1.8. The problem begins as follows. It says the following graph illustrates the market for a breast cancer fighting drug without which breast cancer patients cannot survive. And then we're given a picture that looks like this. And it says, what is the consumer surplus in this market? And how does it differ from the consumer surplus in the markets you have studied up until this point? So let's think about this. Because this sometimes happens, you know, we have our general rules for consumer surplus, and we're used to seeing consumer surplus as a triangle, and so on and so forth. But then every once in a while, we get a situation that doesn't fit nicely into our little rules. So what we need to do in that situation is actually go back to the conceptual definitions and understand exactly what it is we're looking to calculate so that we can figure out how to actually represent that. So you'll notice here, normally when we do this, we have you know, a supply curve that slopes upward. We still have that here, but we normally have a demand curve that slopes downward. Whereas here, we don't have that. We have what's called perfectly inelastic demand in this particular instance, or demand where quantity demanded is completely unresponsive to price. Because what we see here is that regardless of what the price is, the same number of units are being demanded. And that's not entirely surprising. If I needed something to live, I probably wouldn't be that, per you know, wouldn't be that choosy when it came to price. And it seems like here that my limiting factor eventually would become ability to pay and not necessarily willingness to pay as we generally think about it. We said that in order to demand something, you have to not only be willing to pay, but able to pay and ready to pay. So this concept of perfectly inelastic demand is really only reasonable or realistic up until some certain point. That we're eventually going to hit a point where ability to pay starts becoming a problem and people are dropping out of the market, not because they want to be price sensitive, but because they have to be. But over reasonable ranges of prices, it, you know, it makes sense that we could see something like this for, for example, a life-saving drug. So we're used to thinking about consumer surplus, and we say we have these three rules. Well, consumer surplus is the area below the demand curve, above the price that the consumer pays, and to the left of the quantity being produced and consumed. We can find two of those on our diagram, but the third one remains kind of a mystery, right? That we can say, well, above the price that the consumer pays is above this guy. Okay, that's fine. To the left of the quantity transacted, well, if we were to think about what our equilibrium quantity is going to be here, it would be this. So, okay, that's fine. So to the left of here, okay, now below the demand curve below a vertical line, that, that's lovely, that doesn't really make sense. So let's think about what's going on. So rather than think graphically about this, let's revert back to the conceptual definition of consumer surplus. And we said the consumer surplus was the difference between the maximum that a consumer would pay for a product and the actual price that the consumer is charged. So the consumer surplus, you know, on one unit is just willingness to pay minus the actual price charged. And we know that to be true. And again, we know this. So if we could think about what this willingness to pay is, this would tell us what our consumer surplus should actually be. And if we have perfectly inelastic demand, that at least within reason, let's, let's say that, that the consumer is not dropping off, not dropping out of the market as the price increases, think about, well, what is this consumer's willingness to pay? It might not literally be infinite, that their willingness to pay might actually be, you know, the total amount of assets they have at their disposal, or something like that. But if we were to think, you know, graphically about perfectly inelastic demand, essentially what we're saying 
is that the willingness to pay for these consumers is infinite. Well, that would make this difference here, you know, infinity minus some price, is just infinity. So what would actually happen if we were to think about the consumer surplus for all of the consumers in this market, the consumer surplus would actually be infinite. I know that's weird to think about, but that's essentially what this is saying. And that even kind of makes sense graphically, because if we're looking for the area below the demand curve, the demand curve is never actually giving us a ceiling. So we would say, well, our consumer surplus is above the price that the consumer pays to the left of the quantity being transacted and below the demand curve, but the demand curve never shows up. So even graphically, we would just keep shading up forever. And we could also see based on that, that we'd say in this case, our consumer surplus is in fact infinite.